Good morning. My name is Kathy Gregory, and along with Reverend Ellen Baton Walker and MJ Johnson, our music minister, I'm happy to welcome you to our Sunday service this morning. I'm happy to welcome the Forest Hill United Congregation as well as those who have found us through our social media presence. We also welcome United Church Minister Reverend Miriam Spees, who is sharing her story with us today. Miriam is a Crip theologian whose research aims to challenge the church in how it views leadership and who it desires to fill these roles. Her life with a physical disability has led her to challenge models of inclusion and theological unity that do not leave room for people's voices or needs. Miriam is a PhD student at Emmanuel College in Toronto and an ordained minister in the United Church of Canada. She is the co-editor of the Canadian Journal of Theology, Mental Health, and Disability. On behalf of Forest Hill United Church, I am acknowledging that we gather virtually this morning on the Haldeman Tract, which is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Ashinaabe, the Neutral Nation, and the Mississaugas of the New Credit. We make this acknowledgement in the spirit of our Christian belief that all are beloved by Creator God, and that we have been given the land for our living experiences by the Creator. The United Church asks more of us. In its latest calls to the Church, we, as members and adherents of the United Church, are called to move beyond just the words into action, so that historical systemic injustices do not repeat themselves. An important step towards understanding is education, so each week over the summer, we will offer a nugget of learning, something to think about, so that you too are answering the call to reconciled relationships. Today, we begin with the United Church's own calls to the Church. This document articulates the Indigenous Church's vision for the ongoing development of Indigenous peoples, mission and ministry, and communities of faith within the United Church of Canada. It outlines pathways for the whole Church to continue to walk in the Spirit of Christ toward justice, healing, and reconciliation. With words from the elders, our roots as Indigenous people are what the Creator has made us to be. We are embracing who we are as Creator made us. The Indigenous Church will be an instrument of healing our identity and a place of renewal of our cultures. Our roots have been broken by colonialism, and we will restore them. And now is here, here is MJ Johnson, our music minister, to prepare us for worship. As we move into our service today, may the story of this music open our hearts and minds to the Holy Spirit. And so we sing together, Come Touch Our Hearts. Come touch our hearts that we may know compassion from faith. And in a 
gather this morning is being shared with Kathy, and thank you for doing this with me, Kathy. You're welcome. We come to celebrate and to give thanks for God's love for us, where all may find welcome, acceptance, and belonging. We gather, sharing our uniqueness, our differences, our gifts and strengths, our needs and our fears. We come to open ourselves to God's presence. Keep us alert, God. We want to create welcome for all in this place, in our homes and communities and throughout the world. We come to feel loved, accepted and cherished, to be renewed in hope and peace and joy. In God's awesome wonder and grace, we gather to pray, to praise and to share together. I want to thank Kathy Gregory for opening our service this morning, and uh, for Betty Clements, who is again helping me light the candles. So we all light the altar candles this morning uh, for our community, remembering and reminding us to let our light shine out in the world. Sometimes we can get uh, centered here in our own little world, in our own little church community, we just it reminds us that Christ's light, Christ's light shines all over the world, and we give thanks for it this morning. So we're going to light our hope candle. Uh, we are now in stage three, so we're lighting it with a sense of gratitude that most people have, re have had their uh, vaccination and with the encouragement for people to, uh, if they've not got their shots, to, uh, to do so. A thinking of you candle this morning. I want to share with you a conversation uh, that I, I had with Ted Jacobs uh, on su after Sunday service. He emailed me, which I passed on to uh, Sharon Lee Landreau, he was very moved by her talk and her reflection, the tragedy, and it made it brought some things up for him. So I'd like to share that with you because I think it's a wonderful uh, reflection of how the telling the stories uh, connects with our own story. And I have Ted's permission to share this with you. So here's what Ted wrote. When I saw at the end of last week's service that Sharon was going to talk about God's healing through tragedy, I wondered what tragedy she experienced. I never expected that she lost her son because of a drunk driver. As she told her story, my accident came to mind. One minute, Scott was enjoying life, and the next minute, he no longer was. In my case, the driver was not drunk, but he must not have been very attentive to the vehicles on the road and apparently traveling at a high speed. Again, one minute I was looking forward to a great day, and the next minute my life changed. It was challenging for me to get through her story as I was in tears hearing her story. I was glad she stuck with it to bring awareness to drunk driving. What made matters worse for me is that today, meaning last Sunday, the 11th, was that it was the anniversary of my accident. On the 11th of every month, it reminds me of what happened and what I am still going through. But I am thankful to God for allowing me to pull through this even with my challenges. I certainly learned a lot about how our world is not only not meant for people who can use one hand, but also not meant for a left-handed person. I have had a lot to learn. So we just think of Ted and the challenges that he is, has been and is facing, and we send our love to him, and our gratitude for the uh, loading of all the tablets for those who are not on internet. And so we are lighting a, uh, oh, also a, thank, uh, a thinking of you candle for Alicia, which is Donna Deckard's cousin, a young woman 
who is having a health challenge that I'll speak more to in a moment. Our celebration candle, the green one, you can light. Um, celebrating the work that our Safe Start team has begun to do now that we are uh, hopefully staying in stage three and um, getting ready to reorient our our planning to coming back into the, the congregation, into the, into the church. So um, we just want to be prepared and have our plans in place so that we can become back, or we can come back to being the hub of energy and activity that uh, Forest Hill is known to be. Our birthday candle this morning is, be, oh, the pink, yeah, sorry. <laughs> The pink birthday candles being lit to celebrate all those July birthdays. And we just wish that uh, your uh, birthday day celebration will be exciting and that each day for the rest of the year, you will be blessed. Yes, that's good. Okay. And our um, United Church yellow candle there that we're, we've lit, we bless the congregation and the ministry of Port Elgin United Church. May their ministry reflect God's light as God's light is reflected through our service this morning. Thank you, Betty. And so I just invite you now to take a few deep breaths that breath that connects all of us to God's eternal breath of life. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you our thanks for the sustaining breath we are breathing, for the water that sustains our bodies so that we can enjoy doing the things that make our hearts sing with gratitude. Guide us into deeper awareness when we take the gifts of your life and your love for granted. When we are negligent or mindlessly abusing of that which you have provided for us. While we respect that you have given all of us the freedom of choice, we pray that those declining the COVID vaccine vaccine for other than health reasons will take a deeper look into their resistance and hopefully change their minds for the greater health and safety of everyone. This morning we especially lift our supportive prayers for Donna Deckert's cousin Alicia. We pray that those in power making health funding decisions can see justice in offering sufficient funding for her treatment protocols so that she and her family can focus on her health and well-being rather than on financial angst. Our prayerful concern for Alicia's struggles remind us of all those for whom quality health care is not easily available. We lament that there are loopholes in our universal health care system, and we pray that those in power lean into your call for compassion for all of your beloved. Holy One, we remember in our prayers this morning all those like Ted who are challenged as they work hard to regain, to overcome, and to accept health comes that they wish were otherwise. We pray that your closeness with them will give them strength and patience and endurance to move beyond frustration. And, oh God, may we, answer, may we answer your call to offer our support as we can. 
And this morning we give thanks for advocates like Miriam who graciously and determinedly step up to speak out and to offer us the opportunity to re-examine our beliefs and our understanding of those we too often see as the other. May we learn to respect and give thanks for their God-given uniqueness as they share with us as God's teacher. Guide us, O God, as only you can in living out your mission in the world so that all our relations may truly be one this day and every day. And now in a moment of silence, hear the prayers sitting in our heart space, our joys and our concerns. These things we pray in the name of the one who showed us your mothering care and showed us how to pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Songs of Solomon 7, 1 through 7. The gay pride and transgender pride flag blow in the wind. A dancer dances with rainbow ribbons. Turn, turn, O Shulamite. Turn, turn, turn before us, that we might gaze upon you. And what is it that you love? What is it you hope to see? As I dance before you, dancing the dance of Mahanu. Camera focuses on the dancer's feet. Even your feet are lovely dancing in their sandals like a ruler's daughter. Your graceful legs are precious jewels, worked by the greatest craftsman of all. The dancer reaches and holds a chalice. Ah, and your navel is a chalice that I will drink sweetened wine from. She drinks from the chalice. Your belly is golden like wheat and scented of lilies. Your breasts are the twin fawns of a gazelle. She hugs the chalice. And your neck, graceful as David's ivory tower. But your eyes, she looks directly into the camera. Looking into them is like looking into those pools of Heshbon outside the gates of Beth Rite. And your nose is as delicate as those towers in Lebanon that face out towards Damascus. She gestures outwardly. Mount Carmel itself is no more elegant than your head. With its hair weaving a tapestry that would ensnare the proudest. Oh, my pretty one, what a delight you are to look on with all your The dancer looks into the camera and smiles. The dancer continues to move her arms up and down like a bird flying. She reaches up towards the rainbow flags, proudly blowing in the wind. Play with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, O walk 
and amen turn turn also in the mud turn 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 before us that we might gaze upon you and what is it that you love what is it that you hope to see as they dance before you dancing the dance of men and I'm why are I wept and watch Maya and Helen's liturgical offering numerous times my quick clear body and heart hardened with joy. Let me tell you a few stories to illustrate why. I have only danced at weddings, at family weddings in particular. I have only up caring about my crib for body when I'm with family in a crowd of people who already know how my body moves, how my feet up slowly, how my hips move secondly instead of smoothly, how my arms at times pass them and get stuck. Even then, I wore long dresses, hiding my beige braces and running shoes. Sometimes, interest speakers are advised to imagine their audience being naked. So, I'm going to flip this around because as a quip woman, I have been naked in front of a number of people by my attendants and those supporting my living, traveling, dressing, etc. My body is a body that needs caring. When quip sexuality is spoken about in the media and news, and by the way, I've never heard it spoken about in churches. I am flooded by this pressing numbers and horrendous choice. Canadian women with disabilities are twice as likely to be sexually insulted. Four in ten Canadians with a disability. Or were physically and or sexually abused during their childhood. And we know similar stories and numbers are experienced by queer and or racialized bodies. And so queer bodies are to be protected sexuality in some quip bodies is feared, sometimes from internalized ableism and sometimes by paternalistic reactions. Don't get me wrong, these are horrendous events. And they are traumatizing. And it's also harmful for quip 
minds and bodies whose sexuality is only spoken about through these stories. This result in society infantilizing and desexualizing all bodies. Final story. About a week ago, we recorded our latest podcast episode. On the Zoom call, there were three queer bodies, including two quick queer bodies, and one able-bodied mother of an adult son with complex disabilities. Sadly, her son Matthew died at the beginning of the pandemic. The mother of theologians spoke about how her church ignored them and even found Matthew's body and vocalizations undesired in worship. How the congregants were stuck in their heads, disembodied periods that may end up to sin, but otherwise sat ill in the pews. In the conversation, we moved to doors of death, suicide, grief, and it's important how one can ever witness God in the midst of chaos. Our disembodied Zoom bodies were heavy with grief and lament, told and untold. I'm not sure what came over me or how God's spirit was in me, but at one moment I said, I think we need to dance. And that's when we did. A clip clear, mad, grieving, angry, love me, beautiful, physical, and bodies dance together. Not to end on lament, not to find hope in moving forward, but to have pride in our bodies and delight in each other's bodies. To discover the power of naming and resisting oppression, death, and the control of our body by others. And we claiming that our bodies matter in God's word or dancing matters. Fuck, let's be in wonder, Audrey Lord, and quote, when I speak of the erotic, then I speak of it as an assertion of the life force of women, of that creative empowerment, the knowledge and use of which we are now reclaiming in our language, our history, our dancing, our loving, our work, our lives. Reclaiming our dancing bodies as not only needed, but desired. And so my clip, her body fluttered 
were born in choosing this touch, a non-lectionary touch from an entire book in which God is not mentioned by name. A book deemed by some as not theological enough. That pick of physical and central erotic love deemed by some as too candidness that is sometimes narrated by female voices and by black female voices deemed too outspoken bodies in that in all time and context have been over saturnized and objectified, bodies that yearn for and deserve sacred sensuality. I delighted in finding this icon by Angela Yarber, inspired by our task naming her quivering curve and undulating lines. Her body was beloved and holy, sacredly sensuous. From her work on this text, Angela Yarber names it as absolutely revolutionary and passionately for queer women. She locates this poem in the tradition of Arabic love poetry, was in the dancer as a belly dancer, as a writer likened her breath to find her neighbor as a chalice. The point of belly dancing and even dancing is to shake, tremble, shudder, and jiggle. Historically, she argues, belly dancing was performed by and for women an opportunity to explore their sexuality, possibly engaging in queer love. And so she identifies the characters in this poem as queer women, one inviting the other to dance and the other inviting her to this the way she delights in her beloved. An invitational mutual queer desire and love. These uncoverings of the text led her to write the icon and claim finding the shoe in the mind holy is my way of affirming female sexuality. The beautiful variety of the body shape and sizes and including the queer community in the canon of as I delighted in the turning of a queer clip and clip connected bodies on the Zoom call, as I absolutely delighted in the liturgical dance 
created by Mia and Helen. I witnessed the whole neighborhood sessions of being in and affirming all of our bodies, which are connected to the sacred body of the earth. In the world and in churches that often do not affirm us. In yearning, Black Connor Bell Hooks writes, quote, I, made, I make a definite distinction between that marginality which is imposed by oppressive cultures and that marginality one chooses a site of resistance, a location of radical openness and possibility. This site of resistance is continually formed in that segregated culture of opposition that is all critical response to domination. As quick, clear bodies dance, resisting abuses of powers, and resisting all those oppressive judges that we as Christians name as sin, we instead delight in how God created us. We delight in how those who love us experience our beings as holy and sacred, with legs accentuated by and held with voices, with hip that jerk and pause, and with arms that pause them and release. After all, it is God who delights and who we praise when we fight with joy. Amen. Please join in singing in loving partnership.
are many ways to show God's abundance in and through our lives. One of them is in offering financial support that springs into action for others as directed by the Holy Spirit. We are appreciative of your financial gifts to Forest Hill, and on the screen you will see a variety of ways to partner with us in living out God's mission. As we have loved, so may we love others. As we have been fed, so may we feed others. As we have received from God's hand blessings beyond measure, may we generously share with one another and with God's world. Please envision your offering in your hand as I offer this prayer. God, help us to know the truth of your love in our lives. Enable us to grow in the grace we need to be agents of change for a better world. We dedicate ourselves and our gifts to your service. Amen.
And now I invite you to join with me in a prayer for the world. Let us pray. God of pain and God of peace, mother and father of us all, created in your image, we inherited what makes us human, the ability to think, to dance, to communicate, to reflect, and to create. These gifts are precious, and we give you thanks. Though we have gifts in common, we're not all alike. Each of us in a, is a different individual, unique and special. In this prayer time, we come before you rejoicing in difference. We come before you knowing that each child is given a different blend of gifts and experiences that shape and keep shaping us as adults. Every person in your world is differently abled. Show us, O oh God, the way of loving the differences in ourselves and each other. Show us the path of inner peace so that we are beacons of your light and your love. Help each of us use what you have given us so that as we spiritually grow, we are more able to positively share our lives out in your world. These are our prayers for the world. Amen. Please join in singing our final hymn of the service today, Deep in Our Hearts. And just before I do the benediction, I want to thank you for joining us online this morning. And um, we're gl always glad to have uh, people who find us for the first time. So uh, do continue to stay and join us. And also stay for our storytelling, which is going to be a little bit different today. 
and the benediction is taken from <clears throat> More Voices, number 209, Go Make a Difference. As we leave this sacred worshiping time together this morning, step back out into the world to make a difference. For we are the salt of the earth, called to let the people see the love of God for you and for me. We are the light of the world, not to be hidden, but to be seen. We are the hands of Christ, reaching out to those in need. The face of God for all to see. We are the spirit of hope. We are the voice of peace. So let your love and your light shine on for all to see. Do go and make a difference in the world. Amen. This morning, everyone at Forest Hill, I'd like to welcome my friend Patrice Thorne. I've known her for a good number of years, and uh, she has been here at Forest Hill for the, uh, about the last four years. She came just after I did, which would be four years in August. And so, Patrice, I noticed something as I was coming into the church the last couple of weeks, and I, I suspect you know something more about it. Could you share with people what I saw that's new out there by the blessing box. Yes. Beside the blessing box now, there's a new little uh, library, but it's not just an ordinary library like you see around town. This one is called A Little Free Diverse Library, and the books in there are all books um, that are written by people other than white authors. So lots of indigenous authors, black authors, um, Asian authors. So it's the whole idea of diversity and to expose us all to more diversity. There's some kids' books, there's some adult books, there even is a few recipe books. So there's a real variety. That's great. Um, and it's been really uh, busy. Um, I know that a bunch of books got put out there right at the beginning of July. Yes. And they were all gone already. Yes. Uh, Ron, who was also sharing it, Ron Morgan, another new congregant in, uh, at Forest Hill, he was in just uh, yesterday and refilled it because the, the library box was, was empty. So I think you have something else you want to ask people yes. to do? Yes, I would like to ask if you have um, books by authors that are not white authors that you're done with and you'd like to put out in there, actually the best would be to bring them into the church office because we have to label them. And we label them, we're, we're um, box number seven in this community. And we, and we also put in there to please return it to the box. So there's a little label that we put on it. Um, you don't have to purchase them new. If you find any used ones or you have used ones at home, it doesn't have to be a new purchase. But uh, we do want them to be diverse. That's great. It's a, another community effort that Forest Hill's a part of, so that's great. Absolutely. So um, I have shared a couple of stories the last couple of weeks since uh, Gary began his sabbatical, and Patrice has offered to share some storytelling, and I know that uh, Patrice has a background in uh, uh, 
education, and I think she has a particular love of telling stories of diversity as well. So I'm going to invite Patrice to share a story today, and we're going to share it off over the summer. So I hope you enjoy the story that Patrice is going to share with you, and uh, I look forward to hearing the story. And Thank I look forward to reading the story. Good. Uh, so this week I was able to go into the public library for the first time in a long time. I couldn't believe it. I could actually go in the doors and I went right over to the children's section to find some books. And this is one of the books that I found and it's I Am a Story. And because Reverend Ellen is doing this whole thing about storytelling and stories, I thought, hmm, maybe this is going to be a good book to start with. I Am a Story. And you can see right away here, we've got some boys and girls sitting around a campfire telling stories. I am a story. I was told around a campfire. Then painted on cave walls. I was carved onto clay tablets and told in pictures. I was written on papyrus and printed with ink and wood blocks. Then woven into tapestries. and copied into big books to illuminate minds. I was printed and bound. And then acted out on stage. I was read in vast private libraries, then in public libraries open to everyone. And in places you'd never imagine. I made people frightened, excited, sad, and happy. I was censored, I was banned, and I was burned, but I did not die. I've inspired millions. I can go with you everywhere. And I will live forever. I am a story. The end. <laughs> <laughs>